today we're going to be talking about skin. And skin is very important. Remember what skin does? We've looked at that in a few other presentation. It breathes, which means it cannot be blocked because it's breathing. And apparently when they painted the model for, for the James Bond movie, Goldfinger, they had to paint the front part of her gold and film it, wash that off and paint the back part gold and then film her because you can't cover the whole skin or the person will die. It breathes, the skin breathes. So be very mindful to allow your skin to breathe. The skin also throws off waste. Another reason why the skin should be allowed to have as much air and, and probably play, I suppose, as much as possible. So be careful what you're putting on the skin because it can inhibit its ability to breathe and it can also inhibit its ability to throw off waste. And the skin also absorbs. Another reason why we should be careful what we touch. I was consulting with a lady, she was only in her early 40s, who'd had a stroke. So I was immediately intrigued, why did she have a stroke? She's a chemist or a pharmacist and she was from one of the Caribbean islands and she said she mixes all the tablets up together with bare hands. So the chemicals from the from the tablets are all going into her hands. The same thing happened, I met a vet once, a vet nurse, <laughs> and she did the same thing and she had major liver problems. You see, the skin absorbs, so one must be very careful as to what one touches and also what one puts on their skin. But what I want to target in this presentation is two sadly very common diseases today called psoriasis and eczema. Eczema is usually the name given for a baby or a child and psoriasis is usually the name given to the skin disease in, in the latter years. When I say latter years, I don't mean the elderly years, I'm probably meaning latter past teenage years. So getting into the 20s, 30s, 40s, it's often called psoriasis. And I've seen many people suffer extremely with this. And again, we need to know why. Because remember Newton's third law of motion that to every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction. So as I go through this presentation, looking at some of the causes, I'm going to be using a couple of stories of people that have come across my path and the factors that came together to cause their psoriasis. And I'm also going to be, as I weave through these story, show you how they totally conquered it. Did you hear that? Every case of psoriasis, eczema that I have come across, they have been able to conquer it. But I think what we'll do is we'll begin with the babies. So if a baby has psoriasis, I begin to investigate. I talked to the mother and I say to the mother, is the baby bottle fed? And if the baby is bottle fed, I inquire as to the type of milk the baby's on. And if the mother says, it's on a cow's milk formula, then my suggestion is to change over to a goat's milk formula. I don't know about other countries, but I know in Australia, you can buy some very nice goat milk formulas. In fact, I think three of my grandchildren were raised on the goat milk formulas. So you can get some very good ones. So go over to the goat milk formula because an allergy to dairy is one of the big factors in the skin diseases. And if the mother is breastfeeding, then I inquire to the mother if the mother's having dairy. Another factor can be wheat, the hybridized wheat. We looked at that in an earlier lecture, how the wheat was hybridized in the 1950s. So it created a, a structure in the protein or the gluten part of the of the wheat that is very, very difficult to fully break down for the body. And if it's not fully broken down by the body, it gets into the blood, then antibodies are created and you get this whole, this whole reaction in the body. And it's one of the contributing factors to eczema. So I'll give you the story of one lady. And she said, yes, I, I am having wheat. Yes, I am having dairy. Refined sugar? She said, no, I don't have refined sugar. Peanuts? Peanuts can be another factor. 
So I suggested she have the almond milk instead of the uh, peanut butter. So almond butter instead of peanut butter and almond or organic soy milk instead of dairy milk. And for the wheat, I said initially it would be good to go off all bread. Now once the baby's eczema is conquered, you could start with the ancient grain breads, but initially to stop all breads. So she can eat rice, she can eat millet and buckwheat. There are many grains she could eat. After one month, the mother sent me a picture and the baby still had patches of eczema on it. The baby was about eight months of age. And I said, please keep going. Please don't give up because a slice of bread can be out of your body within 24 hours, but the effect can remain for even up to two months. At two months, I get an email with photographs of a baby with no eczema. <laughs> She said, thank you so much, I, I, I didn't realise, and of course most people don't realise it. And there are ladies that are breastfeeding their babies and they're eating dairy and they're eating wheat and their baby doesn't have eczema. I find that when a situation arises in the body, there can be many factors, many factors. That's why these eight laws are used as the investigators. Are they having fresh air? And another lady told me that her baby developed eczema when they went into a new house. And when we investigated in the house, the little cot where her baby slept, there was black mould. Now it wasn't there when she first put the cot there, but they found out there was a leaking tap behind the wall and because the cot was nestled into the corner and had the bedding in there, that they never saw it. Another lady told me that her baby developed eczema after they'd moved into a new house and the baby was always sick. So I, I suggested that they go to the real estate and find out if the house was sprayed. Sometimes houses are sprayed with strong chemicals just before the person moves in and she found that that was the case. And the baby felt it more than anyone because the baby was crawling down, down on the floor and the baby had no eczema until they'd gone into that house. So that's fairly, a fairly obvious connection. So it could be chemicals, it could be mould, these can be contributing factors. Definitely there's usually an inherited factor, but remember genetics loads the gum, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. So you could have a whole family move into, into a house that has just been sprayed with, with uh, chemicals not long before, and the crawling baby will feel it more because they're crawling on the, on the floor. And the parents didn't realise the danger because they thought, wow, this is a great floor. It's a wooden floor, which means it, it will be healthy, but then one also has to investigate were there chemicals in the, in the lacquer that was used to, to uh, paint the floor. So th there are many factors that come in. That's why we should all be private investigators investigating why these things are so. So let's move on to the adults. But before I go on to the adults, I'll just have one more story. And it was a guest that came to our health retreat about three years ago. She said, my grandson had eczema and my daughter took him to a, a paediatrician. And this paediatrician was known to be more on the natural side. He wasn't ready to do drugs like others may be. And, and the paediatrician said to her daughter, remember the daughter of the guest that was with us, stop the wheat, dairy, refined sugar, peanuts and oats. <laughs> Isn't it nice to hear that there are paediatricians who are recognising the role that the, the food has to play. She said, my son totally recovered from his eczema. And that, she said, that's as you have just explained, it took about two months. If the baby doesn't recover in two months, then you would investigate a mould factor or a, um, a chemical factor could, could come into play there. What can you do meanwhile? Is there anything you can put on the skin? Well, unfortunately there isn't because it's from the inside. Now a little coconut oil might bring a little relief. Sometimes aloe vera can bring a little relief. If the baby's itching, ice. 
ice is the best. If you scratch an itch, it feels good, but then after you've scratched it, oh dear, it's even itchier and even now it's hurting and maybe the, the skin is broken. But if you ice it, that just kills the itch, just totally kills the itch. And sometimes it'll kill the itch for several hours. Some people have told me they've only had to apply the ice maybe three times in, the, in a 24 hour period. It's just biding your time until the factors that are causing it are, are out of the body. So let's go to the adult eczema. And I'm gonna give you the story of my son, my son-in-law, Matthew. Matthew married my daughter when I think they were both about 21, 22 and he had a little bit of eczema. And he told me the story that when he was a little boy, he had very bad eczema. He said he can remember his legs bleeding, he used to scratch so much. And he can remember his parents fighting. The mother didn't want him to have the cortisone cream, but the father did to bring him some relief. And he said, if, if dad won, I got the cream and got a bit of relief. But he said it always came back. And so now he's 22 and it's a little bit under control because he discovered if he keeps away from dairy and he only has a little bit of wheat, it's kept under control. There was a little bit in the corner of his arms and a little bit in his hair, but he said it was much managed. And then he moved to Queensland to do a course. And while he was doing the course, in that, he was doing a massage course, he stayed in an old house. Now this house was about to be demolished. So he's 22, I think, at the time. He and another two young guys got the house cheap, $10 a week rent, something like that. So for, for young guys who don't have a lot of money, that was very attractive. So they went into this old house and unbeknownst to them, there was a lot of mold in the house. There was a lot of big trees over the house. And of course, the young guys didn't even think of that. And they were out working all day. So they were just really sleeping there. And Matthew got boxes of bananas cheap. So he was eating, probably half of his diet was just bananas. He said it was just real easy. He'd, he'd get bananas and, and bread for lunch and bananas and cereal for breakfast. And he'd just cook up a heap of veggies at night and have bananas for dessert. They were very proud of themselves that they had this cheap food. But if you know bananas, it's very high and sweet and he's getting exposure to the mold. And he didn't even realize it because he was sound asleep. If he'd been awake in the room, he would have noticed that it's a stuffy room, but he just kept the windows wide open. So his eczema flared up and it flared up very, very badly, worse than it, you know, even since he was a child. So he, he just sort of bore with it and then he moved back down to Victoria where we were. It's a cooler climate, which is nicer on eczema because the heat can really intensify it. And uh, he went on a fairly strict diet. He eliminated all dairy. He eliminated all refined sugar. He even went on a low fruit diet and it just got back under control, back under control. He found that he could eat some oats, but not the wheat. And then let's fast forward, things were fairly good for another 10, 15 years and they moved down to Tasmania. And he loved Tasmania because it's cold down in Tasmania. And in the cold weather, the eczema was not as bad. And they had a couple of children and he was now an architect and he was doing some work. But when you're a tradesman, you don't get paid until the work is done and sometimes people don't pay and so there was a bit of stress in his life. He's got a you know, rented house with his wife and little ones. So whenever stress would happen, his eczema would get very, very bad. And they were living in student accommodation, which was an old house. So a couple of factors coming together there and it got really bad again. Now about this time, they read the book uh, by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride called gut and psychology. And they looked at the role that the gut played in diseases in the body. And they decided to do a vegetarian version of her diet, which is just soup. So what Matthew did, he, he eliminated all grain 
And right in the middle of all this, he came up and worked for us on our property for a couple of weeks. So I knew exactly what he was eating. So he would have this big pot of soup and he'd put beetroot and he'd put carrots and he'd put pumpkins and sweet potatoes and lots of celeries and greens. He also kept away from the nightshade group of vegetable, which is bell pepper, tomato, eggplant and white potato. So that was what was in his soup. And he ate two bowls in the morning, two bowls at lunch and two bowls at night. Now he was also eating with us, so we'd, we'd have the legumes that we have and he'd have some salad and at lunchtime he'd have some of the cooked vegetables we were having and some of the legumes and he always walked out the door with a handful of macadamia nuts and a carrot, that was, that was his dessert. And his eczema totally cleaned up. He said for the first time in his life, it totally cleared up. But it took a couple of months to do that since those other foods were out of his body. He always had a long blonde ponytail. Well, he's cut his hair short and that helped to clear up the eczema in his, in his scalp. His story is, is quite remarkable because it shows how changing different foods helped him to manage it. But what he also had to do, he also had to go on an antifungal diet. So he had to get his sugars right down. Now, when he was living with me, he did not eat any grain and he did not eat any fruit. Now, it's probably 10 years later today now, and Matthew eats fruit. <laughs> and Matthew eats a little wheat. And Matthew eats some oats. But can you see that while he was conquering it, he totally eliminated that. So a lot of people have found that just eliminating the wheat and the oats and the peanuts and the dairy and the refined sugar, that is enough. But he'd got quite a bad dose and after reading this book about eliminating all the grains, he got total victory. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of what to do to conquer psoriasis. So to conquer psoriasis, we're going to go through the, the laws, pure air. Now, I think it was in about at least two of his most serious outbreaks was when he had exposure to mould. But it's not just getting away from the mouldy house or the mouldy environment, it's also taking steps so that it can be eliminated out of your body because now we've got to get it out of the body. So pure air, so no mould, no mould exposure at all, no chemicals. These are poisons to the body. We had some, well there's this Fijian, Fijian family that we know very well and part some of the kids have worked for us for some time. So we had Zach working for us for a while. He was our cook. And if he ate wheat, he was yawning all day long. His sister came and worked to us. And if she ate wheat, she just came out in eczema all over her body. In fact, she said when she was a little girl, because they grew up in Australia, if she had eczema, her mother would send her home to Fiji to stay with the aunties. And in Fiji, they didn't eat wheat. They had cassava and taro. They had all the island food. Her eczema would totally clear up. So I thought this was an interesting story in that these, these are both members of the same family, both the same parents, but when one eats wheat, they get eczema. The other eats wheat, they're tired all day. <laughs> That's why you're the doctor. It can have different effects on different people. That's why when someone says to me, what's the symptom of a weed intolerance? I say, how long is a piece of string? Well, that's what we say in Australia. A piece of string can be an inch long or it can be 10 foot long. It depends on the person. And that's why you're the doctor. If it works, do it. If it doesn't work, keep adjusting till it does it. So pure air is necessary for that. Number two is sunshine. Now another lady told me this story, her child had eczema, they went and lived by the beach for the summer and every day her little girl would wash in the sea and she would lie in the sun and she said her eczema totally cleared up just with the fresh seawater and the sunshine. 
Now the sunshine is important on the skin, but if the skin gets too hot, it can get itchy. And if it gets itchy, the person's liable to sc scratch. But remember ice, have the freezer full of ice. Ice is the best anti-inflammatory there is. When you scratch eczema, it feels good, <laughs> but when you scratch it, you're actually calling more blood to the area, which feeds the redness, which feeds the inflammation, and you keep scratching, it, you can break the skin, and then of course it can get infected and you've got a whole other big problem then. So remember the ice. So sunshine, I'm going to put within reason. The sunshine's important. Maybe after you've had a sun, then you do the ice. So within reason. Within reason also, if you've got light skin, of course you don't want to burn your eczema, then it'll be even worse. So a little bit of discretion is needed there. Number three is temperance. Now temperance means not taking anything into the body that will harm it and taking in moderation the good things. So we're going to look at the nose. There are some things that sh must be totally stopped and that is wheat. If someone has eczema or psoriasis, I suggest even the ancient grains initially stop. And when it's conquered, then go on the ancient grains, but it's best to stay off the wheat. But as my son-in-law Matthew, he says he can handle about a slice of bread th three days a week. That's about all. <laughs> but he said that he cannot have it every day. He can have a slice of bread here, and after two days, he can have another slice. He will not get a reaction. But if he said if he does it every day or has more than one at a time, he gets a reaction. Now, remember, this is Matthew who's conquered it. He's conquered it. And now that he's conquered it, he can have a little now and then. But initially, no wheat, no dairy. And also no oats and no refined sugar. And one of the reasons peanuts is not good is because they're commonly tainted with mould. In the book, The China Study, you know, in his research, he found every jar of peanut butter had mould in it, had the aflatoxin in it. So they must stop. So the moderation, all good things. So moderation and I would say that the moderation in the foods would happen after the healing has happened. When the person is healed, then they can start to have the ancient grains. And the ancient grains are kamut, enkenhorn, spelt. There may be a few others, but they're the, the main ones that are the most common. So that must stop. And of course, absolute no to the chemicals and also no to the moles. Now chemicals, have a look at your laundry detergent. It's very important that the clothes be washed in a biodegradable, friendly washing detergent. And don't use very much. Some people even choose just to wash their clothes with sodium bicarbonate. It'll have a wash and then it'll have a rinse and ideally, so we're going to make a section here on clothes because it's the clothes that touch the skin. So ideally, we want them sun dried. So yeah, we're going to have to get some clothes lines out. Or you could buy a dryer. I mean, you know, those little racks, that's what I mean by a dryer. Put the little rack out in the sun. Sun dried and also biodegradable biodegradable gradable let's hope that spelling's right so biodegradable soaps and when I say soaps I'm referring also to what washes the clothes with again you can if, if it's too hard to find one that's fine um, just use sodium bicarbonate powder I know in Australia we can buy 20 kilos for 20 dollars it's 20 kilos for you'd be what, about 40 pound. And also, it's of the utmost importance, and this is an area a lot of people underestimate, is natural fibre. The clothes must be made out of natural fibre. So your natural fibre 
And I think the obvious ones are your cotton and your silks and your wools, your flax, your hemps. But you might not be aware that modal is the cellulose spun from the birch tree. And so it's a natural fibre. Viscose. Viscose is also made from wood pulp. And rayon. So the, these three are made from wood pulp. Now some claim that the process of making it has chemicals in it. Well, before I wear anything I buy, I always wash it and I hang it out on the clothesline for the day. The sun purifies. That's why I love sun-dried clothes. <laughs> it purifies it. Now some of these can be expensive and so you can always visit the, um, you call it the thrift store here, the second hand shop. And uh, I know my grandsons, when they come to visit, I've got a suitcase full of clothes for them. Because <laughs> so often they'd come with not enough clothes, you know, when little boys pack their own clothes because the parents are so busy, what comes isn't always the most appropriate or not enough. So I just go to the second hand shop and I've got a great pile of clothes for them. I even find that you can get some nicer cotton clothes in the thrift shop compared to the, the new clothes. So make sure it's all natural fibre. So number four, we're getting to number four, and that's sleep, eight hours. Eight hours for adults, 10 hours for children. As long as the lights are low at night and you have your main meal more in the middle of the day, eat lightly at night and have soft music and read a nice sleepy story, you can usually get the children into bed early. It's a good idea to note no technology when the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, your brain and your eyes know that and it's winding down for sleep. So if the eyes see the technology, that just wakens everything up. So adults, if you're not used to eight hours sleep a night, I've got some good news. You can retrain the brain and you can get used to it. And once you start experiencing these longer hours of sleep, um, you, you will be convinced. <laughs> you will feel so much better. So the sleep's important because that's where the body is recharging. That's where it doubles its healing powers. Number five is exercise. Now the exercise, probably the best exercise for anyone with psoriasis is swimming in the ocean, nice and cool. As you warm up, you've got your nice cool water on you because if you do the high intensity interval training, out not in the water, so on an exercise bike or at running up hills, as your body heats up, the psoriasis gets really, really itchy. So if possible, find a creek or a dam or unfortunately, uh, the swimming pools of today often have a lot of chlorine in them. The salt water would be, would be the best. So if you cannot swim and you have no access to the pools, my suggestion is maybe the exercise bike or the rebounding because the body must exercise for it to have enough oxygen to be able to heal effectively your whole body. And then straight after your exercise, just have a 10 minute cold shower <laughs> and that'll just cool that skin. That'll cool that skin right down. So the, the next one is diet. So then, then the question is, well, what do we eat? One man said, you've just taken away all our food. We have oatmeal for breakfast with milk on it and we have toast with peanut butter on it. What are we going to eat? Well, there are some other grains that aren't as well known, which are very nice. A very nice porridge alternative is the millet. But remember, one millet to four water. And that makes a nice soft porridge. If you're not an early riser, you could put it in the crock pot overnight and then you wake up in the morning and the millet's ready. Quinoa is another 
gluten-free grain that you can use buckwheat. Not everyone's excited about buckwheat like the Polish are, so I'll leave it up to you. And rice, rice is very safe. It's one of the lowest allergen foods there is, is rice. And if your family's not used to brown rice, you could do half white rice, half brown rice and get, get them slowly used to it. But if the brown rice is cooked enough, it is soft. So ideally, if you're doing a rice cooker, say, what is it, 40 minutes, I think it cooks, turn, it'll go off by itself. Don't touch it for another hour. That second hour, that, that'll soften that grain right up because it's like in a little oven. If you don't think it's hot enough, you can, when it's off, you can put some blankets on it and keep it, keep it a little bit warmer. But, or even just put it in, in the oven, but it'll, it'll continue to cook and that'll get all those little starch granules broken down. So there's, there's your alternative to your oats. So you've got alternatives to refined sugar in your honey and maple syrup, palm sugars, they're not as refined. So for your peanuts, really all nuts. So instead of peanut butter, you can get cashew butter, you can get almond butter. In Australia, you can get macadamia butter. I don't know if you can get that here, but there are several alternatives that you can do. And for your alternative to your dairy, there's lots today. Soy, remember soy's okay as long as it's organic. Almond milk. Coconut makes a very nice alternative. There is rice milk. I find it very, very thin and watery, but if you like something a bit creamier, you can go to the, go to the coconut. So there are alternatives to all of these. We should enjoy our food. God, made, God gave us taste buds for a reason. So get some cookbooks and find out how to make them taste magnificent. So a breakfast might be a millet with a coconut coconut milk on it and maybe some raspberries or strawberries or blueberries, the, all the berries or, or pear. And on top of that, in fact, we're going to come to medicine. We'll come to medicine in a minute. There is some medicine that you can use that will certainly help with the healing process. But let's finish the diet. We've done breakfast, so here's breakfast. Now we're going to do lunch. So what do we have for lunch? Ideally, your main meal is at lunch. Always a salad. Just choose the things you love. Also vegetables, they can be baked, stir fried. I had a beautiful lunch yesterday. It was a whole lot of veggies just baked. That's delicious. And the protein, the protein's important. So the protein can come in the form of Legumes, so that's chickpeas, lima beans, black-eyed beans, cannelloni beans. I was talking to a lady recently, there's just her and her husband. I said, you probably only have to cook three legume dishes a week. I don't like to keep anything more than two days. So cook it this day. Yes, you could eat it the next day, but not the third day. So let's, I said to this lady, what you're cooking is enough for six people. So keep enough for tomorrow and freeze the rest. And after two weeks, you're going to have a lovely selection of legume dishes in the, in, the, uh, in the freezer. Maybe by the third week, you don't even have to cook because you've got those excess in the freezer. Make them taste magnificent. You can get a, a vegan Indian cookbook and not all Indian food is hot. My husband doesn't like hot, so I don't usually cook hot or hot foods. But I always have cayenne pepper on the table, so if you like it a bit warm, you can put the cayenne pepper on. You've also got soy. Make sure it's organic. Make some nice things with the uh, tofu. And also uh, nuts and seeds. They can be ground and they can be mixed with uh, gluten-free breadcrumbs, grated carrot and onion and made into a loaf or made into little burgers. So your nuts and your seeds. So there's your protein. Your protein's very important because the fats are important because the membrane around every cell in the body is 50% fat. So what about supper? You call it supper? 
So supper, ideally, is best savoury because a high sugar diet can feed the irritation from eczema. So even a lot of fruit can feed that because fruit has a lot of, lot of glucose in it. So supper, sometimes you, will all, you may need is a herb tea. If you've got teenagers, you'll have a riot on your hand if you only serve herb tea at night. So for the teenager, it might be a smoothie. And that smoothie ideally is made with the coconut water or almond milk or organic soy milk. And in that you might put what I'm going to be listing here as medicine is the chia and the flax. And the reason why these are part of the medicine is because they're high in an essential fatty acid called omega-3. An omega-3 is a very thin oil and it comes out and nourishes the skin internally. So, the, so that's medicine, but it can be very nice on your smoothie. It can also be nice sprinkled on your breakfast. So you might have your millet or your quinoa or your rice, some coconut milk. If you want sweetener, you're best to stew up some apple or have apple sauce. The Granny Smith apples, they don't really need that. There's your sweetener. And then have fruit on top and then sprinkle ground flax over that and chia over that. That's, that's a breakfast that will take someone quite a few hours. And yet those omega-3s are nourishing the skin internally. And it can go in the smoothie as well. And maybe in the smoothie, you'll put some pear or some berries, maybe a little bit of protein powder. For children, you want it light. For adults, you want it light. For the teenagers, they might want a little bit more. So you, you play with that. If the person has a smoothie and they sleep well, it's good. If they have a smoothie and they're a bit uncomfortable in the stomach, well, the next night we, we might do just the herb too, or just the herb tea, or a soup. The soup's great to have at night. You might only have to cook soup twice a week. Keep enough for the next day and freeze the rest. That could be just vegetable soup, maybe vegetables with a few lentils in it. So you can see supper is light because when you go to sleep, your stomach needs to sleep. And when you go to sleep and your stomach's sleeping, then you've got more energies in the body to do the nighttime revamp, revive and heal. Water. Water's vital. Water keeps the skin supple. And the rule of thumb is uh, to 50 pound one, qu one uh, quart. So, so that's four glasses to 50 pounds. So for a 100 pound person, they should be having two quarts. So that's a good rule of thumb and that also helps to know how much the children should have. And when you have that water, also salt. So your whole salt, which is your Celtic salt. Himalayan salt is not far behind that. Over the day, little by little by little over the day. Just in case you didn't catch this one earlier, I wake up in the morning, I have half a glass of water. I go to the bathroom, I have half a glass of water. I pray, I have another half glass of water. I get dressed, I have an... Can you see what you're doing? By the time I go on my morning walk or my morning exercise, I've usually had at least three glasses. And when I get back, I have another glass. So that's, I usually aim for four glasses before breakfast, which I can. As a rule, I wake at five and eat at seven, so it's easy. And then I don't drink again, probably for about two hours after I've eaten. And then I've got a few hours before I have lunch at about one, one thirty. And then I have a couple of glasses after lunch, mid-afternoon, late afternoon, because if I have too much water, I don't want to be up at the night. So that's, ju that's just me. And so I usually average, I'm 100 pounds, so I average two to two and a half quarts a day. So if you're not used to drinking water, start slow and little by little, build it up. So the eighth law is trust in divine power. What Matthew found is that when he was in debt, and he had a family to feed and life was a little bit stressful, 
his eczema got a lot worse. So it's important to daily trust that God gave us this body with an inbuilt ability to heal itself and it'll heal itself when you give it the right conditions. I share this with you because I have seen so many people conquer their eczema by these, by these simple, simple things. So if you've got stress in your life, remember what God says in 1 Peter 5 verse 7. It says, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you because he has a way through every situation. We've just got to trust him. And don't forget that in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says, in everything give thanks. Thank God for every single thing that's happening in your life. And that helps to alleviate stress. And love the moment. It's called the power of now. Love where you are right now because you're never going to have this moment again. And when you love the moment, past pain fades and future worries don't seem so bad. God says, I've just given you today and tomorrow I'll give you another day. And that can certainly help to relieve stress. So trust, trust in God. He is able. The Bible says in Jude 24, under him who is able... He is able to keep you from falling and present you even faultless before his Father's glory with exceeding joy. What beautiful promises we have. Take them, hold on to them and make them your own. So what I wanted to show you in this presentation is how you can use those eight laws and apply them to just about everything that's happening in your body. And specifically, we wanted to look at eczema and psoriasis. So let's go over to medicine again. So this is internal. This is internal medicine. So your internal medicine definitely is the food that you eat. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. So the three essential food groups are fibre. We've got a lot of fibre in this. Protein. We've got our protein in our grains here and in our seeds that are sprinkled on top. We've also, um, the other third one is fats. So you've got your proteins, your fibres and your fats. Where are your fats? Your fats are coming in here. Your fats are coming in your nuts and seeds and the little bit of coconut and olive oil that you may add to your legumes to make them taste delicious. At the table, I always have olive oil on the table. I put some on my salad, some on my vegetables. I had a baked potato yesterday. My husband will be so happy. I haven't had a potato for a few weeks. I open it, I put olive oil in it and the Celtic salt on it. Very, very nice, it's delicious. So you're putting a little bit of oil in this and your your oil that you eat is nourishing your skin. So that's very important. So we're looking at internal, internal medicine, which is the chia and the flax. The proteins are very important. And also other fats, which is your olive oils and coconuts. But these particularly, because they have omega-3 in them, um, are nourishing the skin. So how much would you have? At breakfast for a child, they might have a teaspoon of ground flax and a teaspoon of chia. Me, I might have four teaspoons of ground flax and four teaspoons of chia. You can also make little uh, balls, say mashed up cooked dates. And in that mashed up cooked dates, you might put some ground flax and some chia and some coconut and make them into little balls and freeze them. A little bit of coconut oil is nice, melt in your mouth when you eat it. In fact, there's quite a few recipes. They're like little, little uh, nut balls. So that can be a nice dessert and that's got the chia in it that you can have for lunch and having the dates in it, you don't have to put any more sweetening in it. So that's internally and liver herbs. Your liver herbs are important to boost your liver because your liver is the orchestrator of everything that's happening in the body and your liver is the detoxifying agent 
when there's been mould and chemicals coming into the body. And there are herbs that are particularly powerful for the liver. One is dandelion. So if dandelion's growing around your house, you can finely slice it and thread it through your salad. It will be bitter, but if you've got some lovely avocado and sweet hearts of lettuce in there, a little bit of bitter, I actually think is quite pleasant through, through the sweet, sweet vegetables. And Mary's thistle, we'll call it milk thistle. It is St Mary's thistle, but it, a lot of people know it as milk thistle. And gentian. Gentian is a herb that is a very bitter herb. It's a root. It's not that, it's not that well known. Now these are very bitter herbs. So a lot of people choose to take them in a tablet form or in a uh, capsule form three times a day. Because when you boost the liver, it boosts your skin with its healing and it boosts detoxifying some of the things that have contributed quite possibly to the psoriasis that you are experiencing. Remember, genetics loads the gun and lifestyle pulls the trigger. I've had some people say to me, I am not prepared to give up this. So what I say to them is, I understand that, but let me show you some alternatives. And it's not forever. You see, some people look at this and said, I can never have peanuts again. I can. No, it's not just until you heal. And when you heal, you can, if you, if you heal and then go straight back into all of that, it's quite possible it'll all come back. So that's why you're the doctor then. You, you use your discretion. And what you'll find is once you've conquered it, you could probably have a little bit of that now and then and your body will say yes, or it'll say no, or it'll say just a little bit. No man can tell you what your body can tell you. Something else that's happening is your skin is an organ of elimination and you have four organs of elimination. So it's vital, and I'm gonna rub some of these out too, because this is part of the medicine. It's vital that you make sure that your other organs of elimination are working properly. So that is your, your skin. We've talked quite a bit about the skin and that's your, your natural clothing, making sure that anything you put on your skin is natural fibre or natural creams. And if you do put anything on the skin, you can try, you can try the aloe. Aloe vera can be very soothing to the skin. You can try it. What some people do, they'll try a patch there, they'll try the coconut oil somewhere else and the coconut oil can also be applied to the skin. But what I have found the most effective is ice. Ice kills the inflammation, kills the itch and allows that skin to heal. The other organ of elimination is your kidneys and your kidneys need you be they need you to be drinking a lot of water <laughs> if you're 100 pound try for two and a half quarts bring it up if your if your weight is more so one organ of elimination two organs of elimination and the three the main one we're going to look at now is the colon so the colon should be evacuating ideally three times. If you're eating three meals, it should be three evacuations a day. If you're eating two meals with a very light supper, probably twice a day. So how can you encourage that? Most people find that once they start implementing all of this, the colon starts to evacuate a lot more effectively and regularly, especially these little chia seeds and flax seeds. They're very good at stimulating the colon to start moving more. And as I showed a little bit earlier in the week, uh, squatting to go. So you can buy something called Squatty Potty that puts a little stool around the toilet and it keeps your knees up. And when you squat, it opens the last part, the last part of your colon so you can evacuate with ease. When you stimulate the liver to detox more effectively, the waste is going to be coming out of your skin, your kidneys and your colon. Now, if you can, 
ensure that these two here are evacuating effectively, it takes pressure off the skin. And when someone's got psoriasis or eczema, they want to alleviate that skin. So let me finish with a story of a man who came to us from Saudi Arabia. This was oh, three years ago now, I think. He was 40. And he, his story was interesting. He said that he'd had eczema, then psoriasis, since he was about 10. And he'd used cortisone most of his life. Whenever it got bad, he put cortisone on. And as he testified, as most do, it always comes back. It does, it's not a cure. It just relieves if it's really bad. He wanted to conquer this, so he started Googling around looking at psoriasis and he found a, a website called Cortisone Induced Eczema. And he said a, a German doctor resides over this and this German doctor has discovered that this, this cortisone that's been used so much, and most doctors will try and get you to, to have it very lightly because they know it's not, it's not the best cream. It certainly can bring relief, especially when it's really bad. And this German doctor said, there's only one way out of this, you've got to stop it. You've just got to stop applying it. He said, you're going to go through living hell, just live in, in a bath with sodium bicarbonate or oats in it. Some have found an oat bath relieves. It, it's going to be very, very bad. But he said, eventually the body will get used to it. And he said he'd just gone through that. He'd just gone through six months of that. He said it was very, very bad. When he came to us, there were little patches of psoriasis, just little patches, and the back of his neck was like crocodile skin. It was really bad. He was with us for two weeks. He did two lots of juice fasting. We had him on liver herbs. We had him on the, on the cheer and the flax. At the end of the two weeks, he said to me, I'm very disappointed. He said, there's no real improvement. And I said, I understand. I said, I do not think you will see a real improvement for two months. You've got to give your body that amount of time to get the irritants, especially these, out of the body. He emailed me exactly six weeks later. So that's two months after he stopped. He said, I cannot believe that my skin is totally clear. He booked in, he and his wife, and came a year later, and his skin was as mine. <laughs> he said, I cannot believe it. He said, my specialist told me I would never be free of this. He said, I'm free of the drugs, and I'm free of the psoriasis. He said, there was another factor that we had to address. He said, in Saudi Arabia, because he worked on the, the oil rigs, he said there are these huge housing developments and they've all got air conditioning, but some of them the air conditioning is very old and in the moist, hot, damp area there's mould in a lot of the ceilings. He said we discovered that at our house we were changing our filter every half hour, the f air filter that should be changed every two months. But because he's high up in the, in the job he's in, he was able to get a newer house. So that was another factor. So after hearing these lectures, they discovered there was also a mould and a chemical factor there that they had to address. But they were very, very happy. So they just came back to Misty Mountain just to enjoy Misty Mountain and just to show us his skin. So there is hope for those with eczema and psoriasis. I'm going to leave you with a verse from the Bible. It's very important here. It's found in Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. <laughs>